hope everyone is well. Um, I am coming to you to start from the outside today uh, because we've lost power in the church. But in worship, you're going to find a greater power, a power that is under control. I hope you will join us. God bless you. Like every time I had a choice, I made the wrong one. I was looking for answers on my own. Had an angel on my shoulder, a devil in my ear, yelling, telling me where to go. And I blindly followed. Sometimes it's like Sometimes he screams out your name Right there at the top of his lungs But I don't hear a thing Sometimes I need to get out of my own way And be quiet for once in my life Just slow down Pin drop when the music has got the beat, pump the soul out. You can't even point out the rhythm of your own heart. That's where it starts. Sometimes it's like thunder. Sometimes. Right there at the top of his lungs But I don't hear a thing Sometimes I need to get out of my own way And be quiet for once in my life Just slow down Just slow down and remember. Sometimes it's like thunder. Sometimes he screams out your name. Right there at the top of his lungs, but I don't hear a thing. Sometimes I need to get out. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. We are so glad that you could be here. Please be sure to like and share this service so that more people will be able to see it. This year's charge conference will be held on Sunday, November 8th at 6.30 p.m. through Zoom. 
Those in attendance will be in listen-only mode and will be attending with about 30 other churches. When the conference link becomes available, we will send it out to those of you who may be interested in attending. We are right in the middle of stewardship, so please be sure to be on the lookout for two very important pieces of communication that will be coming your way at the first of the week. The first is an email containing a congregational survey, and the second is your yearly packets, and they are already in the mail and on their way to you as we speak. So again, be sure to be on the lookout for those. Mark your calendars for Sunday, November 15th, is Celebration Sunday. This day will be filled with food, fellowship, and fun. On that day, you'll be able to drop off your estimate of giving cards, you'll be able to pick up a Christmas gift from Simpson Wood, and you'll also be able to enjoy a delicious Thanksgiving feast from our very own Chef Bobby Smith, and that will be drive through and pick up only. On this Sunday, you will also be able to donate canned goods for our mega canned food drive for Neighborhood Cooperative Ministries. So again, be sure to mark that date on your calendar because it's going to be a lot of fun. We are so glad that you could join us and I will see you next week. Be sure to stay tuned for a message from Brian concerning our mega canned food drive. Bye. Good morning, church family. I wanted to give you an update on one of the awesome things happening on Sunday, November 15th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m right here on the church campus in front of Building C. We are doing another major food drive for the Neighborhood Cooperative Ministries to help alleviate some of the struggles that they are facing right now. You can go to their website to find a list of the most needed items, everything from canned meat to vegetables, all the way down to pasta, and know that we'll be here the entire time to collect the items when you drive through because we wanna do the best that we can to again, help alleviate some of the struggles that they are facing. We know this is going to be a huge project because we are trying to collect 10,000 pounds, but we have great faith that this will take place. Speaking of faith, boys and girls, if you're with us this morning, I want you to do me a favor. Turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter eight, verses five through 13. This is a story about a Roman officer who had great faith in Jesus that he would heal his servants. I don't want to give away the ending, but I'd love for you to read that with your moms and dads this morning sometime. Again, Sunday, November 15th, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Miss Emma, myself, a bunch of the youth will be out there to help. We want to do the best we can for this great cause, and we want to give back during this season of Thanksgiving. Church family, you are loved. Thanks for your time this morning, and we'll see you soon. Hey there, you caught me in the kitchen. I hadn't planned on cooking tonight, but... Kathy's had a busy day, some things unexpectedly came up, so she asked me if I could help do something for dinner. So I said, sure. You know, I'm usually glad to help when I can. I think probably most of us are that way. We like helping others, and someone's always there to help us. And this is the month we need to look at and see what kind of help the church needs for next year. It's our stewardship campaign. That's just not a financial campaign. But this year, there's been a lot of unexpected things happen and our own lives as well as the church. So we're not asking for a pledge this year. We're only asking for an estimate of giving so we can have a balanced budget to fund our staff and our ministries and our missions. But what we do need everyone to do is go online and take the church-wide survey and indicate the things that you would like to do this year that would help the church. And if you don't know what those things are, someone will give you a call. Now let me get something in the oven. We're having a little fall dinner tonight. Figured I'd do something special for Kathy, something unexpected. So a few root vegetables, potatoes, a stuffed pork roast, the sausage and apples. So we'll just let this cook. Speaking of cooking, a number of years ago, I got a phone call from Lawrence and he asked me if I would do something for him. And I said, what's that Lawrence? And he asked me to head up the 3F committee. Well. My next question was, what's that, Lawrence? Because I didn't know what the 3F committee was. This was probably the mid-90s. So he explained that the 3F committee was in charge of planning the Wednesday night dinners, the programs after Wednesday night, all the festivals, any gatherings or celebrations. So I said, well, you know, I like to cook and I like to plan parties, so I said, I can do that. So he said, great, I want you to come to the meeting next Tuesday night and be our first administrative council meeting for the year, you'll meet some people and we'll talk more about what everybody will be doing next year. So I went to the meeting, 
When I got there, I looked around the table. I didn't know that many people. The ones I did know, I didn't maybe know too well. So we, we took turns going around, and everybody was introducing themselves and telling what committee they were serving on. Well, we got to one gentleman, and he said that um, he was going to be the chair of the stewardship committee this year. And he really didn't know what he was getting into, didn't know much about what the stewardship committee was supposed to do. And the only reason he was here is because Florence had asked him to do it. It was about that time Charles Battle spoke up and said, well, how do you think the rest of us got here? And that's just the way it was back then. The church had a need. Someone called, said, can you help? Maybe with some anxieties, but with some faith, we said yes. We got involved. We didn't know what we were getting involved in, but we got involved. And every time something unexpected and wonderful happened. I remember the time <clears throat> that it was just before Thanksgiving, and we were planning Wednesday night service, supper. And someone said, what are we going to do next week? That was right before Thanksgiving. And they suggested, let's do a Thanksgiving meal. We did. Linda called and got some volunteers. We normally had 25 people on a Wednesday night. We had 20 volunteers. I thought we were going to have more people volunteering than we were going to be serving. We ended up with 60 people. Last year we had 260 people for Thanksgiving feast. We've been doing it for 25 years. That was totally unexpected. I remember the time Chris Miller and Cindy Miller, who were responsible for creating and, and setting up Bethlehem. Chris and I worked for the same company. Our kids were great friends through the years, and, and the families did a lot of things together. And he said, um, you got a farm? He says, what kind of animals you got? So I said, I've got some cows and calves. He said, well, what do you think about bringing some animals to Bethlehem? And I said, well, I'm, we have to build a corral, but maybe we can do that. We need some help. So we got some help, and we weekend before we built a big corral as we're building Bethlehem. And I called one of my neighbors. Then I called around some of my church buddies, and reluctantly got a few volunteers to go up and help me load up some cows. And went down to my neighbors and got the donkey, and we found some sheep and we found some goats. And we came back and we unloaded everything in the pen, and thought everything was great. Everybody that was asked to help was there, willing to help. Everything went great. Well, then, about 6 o'clock in the morning, we get a phone call saying, Bob, your cows have escaped. That was unexpected. So, came over to the field and looking for cows, waiting for the sun to come up, and there was no sign of any cows. So we started calling. And by 10 o'clock, we had 50 people. 50 cowboys that when they woke up, they had not expected to be herding cows in the afternoon. But 50 people showed up because they were asked to come help, help do something they'd never done before. So we did what anybody would do in these parts. We figured we had to have a place to put them, so we made a human funnel out of cars and people, and we herded them into the playground of the church. Lee Harwood was our wrangler, in charge of helping getting them on the trailer, which we did, got them back over, put them in the pit, and the most unexpected thing about that was I never expected to see those cows again. I don't know where they're going to be. I might have had to donate them to the church, but I didn't expect to see them back in that corral. When you volunteer, something unexpected is going to happen. I think about all the time John Manning gave us the, the, the children's sermon, and so many times something unique Something unexpected happened. A child would say something, and John would go with it. And it touched us all because he was willing. He was a great steward for our church and a leader, uh, an inspiration for our children. Go online, take the church survey, and remember, we will have a celebration this year, but on the 15th of November, it won't be gathering inside like we normally do, and we probably won't be able to have our Thanksgiving feast inside, but we will have a drive through dinner on the 15th, so you may be getting something unexpected on that day. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your service, and I can't wait to see you at church. God bless you all. So things haven't turned out as you hoped. Life took a turn, a bump, 
a darkened sky. And at times it may have seemed there was no hope. But here's the good news. Our God is the God of fresh starts. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Our God brings new mercies, new compassions, not just once a year, not just when things are bad, but every single morning. This season has been tough. And for many of us, things will never be the same. But we are here, breathing, maybe smiling, or crying, or shouting, or laughing. But we are here, feeling, maybe fighting, or cheering, or seeking, or grieving, but we are here living and we are not alone our God is here our God is with us and our God is the God of new creations Good morning, church family. Today's scripture comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 9 through 15. Let's listen to the scripture together. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of the one who created it. In this image, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all things and in all people. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called in one body. And be thankful, people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In Sam Mendes' movie, 1917, Lance Corporal Schofield is tasked with the urgent critical mission of getting to the front lines of the British Army through enemy infested territory with an urgent piece of information. There is a secret ambush that is planned against the British Army if they continue forward. The message and the timing is absolutely critical. Thousands, untold numbers of lives are at stake and hinge on this message. As he is being sent, he is also given one other critical um, piece of information. He is uh, to make sure that when he relays this information, that in the presence of his officer, that there are witnesses. He is told, make sure there are witnesses for some people Some men just like to fight. We might say that that's true still in our world today. Some of us, some in this world, sometimes we always just like to fight. Power moves that we employ, we learn in this world. And they are so different from what we come to learn 
uh, as disciples of Christ. Paul writing to the church in Colossae in chapter 3 here comes to the heart of his message. At the heart of it is an understanding of power and control. How is the church in Colossae to exert their power? How does the disciple in this world live in the midst of power moves? I know you've had the same experience that I have in the last week. I, I get one type of mail in my mailbox. It's all mail <laughs> um, leading me to vote for somebody else and for their power. Oftentimes it's with, um, with the manipulation that something bad's being told about another. It's a secret kind of power there. For the last days and months, um, we have seen, especially in our world, the way that the world we wields power. And Christ comes to teach us, though, something is different. There's a power that is far greater is stronger, that's more reliable, and that has the true power to touch and change the world. But this is a power that's under control. Paul, in this part here from his writing from verse 9 through 15 in this chapter, relates a series of themes that he does in other places in all of his writing. Now you know this, when a, when a teacher relates a message that is repeated in many places, we would say that message is really important to a teacher. Uh, when, a, when a pastor or a preacher relates something multiple times in a message or a writer conveys the same, we take note. Well, it's no different here with um, this part of Paul's letter. There are at least three themes that are repeated many times in the rest of his writing. And so we should take note of these. The first one uh, that Paul relates is that the Christian holds the power to change not the past, but the future in their own lives. Every disciple holds the power to create and to build something that is totally brand new. In Romans 12, 2, Paul relates, Paul relates how uh, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. It, also in his letter to the church in Corinth, the second one, he relates how we are made into new. The old is laid aside as we become new people in Christ. You probably need to hear this today. There's no greater power truly than one changed life. If you want to change the world, you just keep allowing God to change you first. And that becomes a witness to all the world of the greatest power that this world knows. The power to change one from the inside out, through and through, wholly into the image of Jesus Christ this work never stops in our lives and it never loses its power. In, uh, there's a theme that follows this verse um, in verse 9 and 10 where Paul relates the barriers that are present in his day and time. Greek and Jew, barbarian and Scythian. Scythians actually were another form of barbarian, a lesser form circumcised or uncircumcised, slave or free. He says all of the barriers that we understand in our world, they are broken down in Jesus Christ. And that is true in our day and time, where, especially where we are more divided than we ever have. Jesus holds the power to break down barriers in your life and in mine by age, by gender, by status, by race, by sexual understanding, by education, by political aff affiliation, and by football teams. That's right, I just got personal with you. 
all of these, all of these are broken down. They are laid aside. There is more in common, and we have more in common in Christ together than we do different. And the Christian is ever working to bring others together in the cause of Christ. Now we forget about this work sometimes. We advance on our own beachheads for what we think is important. May we be reminded that the power that we wield in Christ is a power to bring others together that Christ would be glorified. We lay aside. We surrender our own will. We come together in the understanding that Christ is bringing together His people from all around the world and from down the street and from within your own household. All the barriers are broken down in Jesus Christ and we commit to this work. We wield our power to do this. There is another common theme uh, that is laid out. Um, you, you have heard this list before. It's uh, Paul's practice to give a list of the characteristics that make us distinct in Jesus Christ. But moreover, it really reflects um, the ways that we wield power. Power that's always under control, a power that's guided, guarded by our hearts. You've seen this list in other places. The words gentleness, compassion, empathy, kindness, forgiveness, tolerance, and above all, putting on love. It sounds a lot like the list that's given to the Galatians that we call the fruit of the Spirit. Many of the same words are used in the letter to the Philippians where Paul tells them to hold on to those things that are pure. We looked at that just a few weeks ago. It's given to Timothy in instructions. It's given to the church in Ephesus for understanding. If you want to understand power, Christ's power is radically different. Now here's what you and I think. Gentleness and humility will get you run over in life. Empathy and compassion will leads you to being a doormat. Forgiveness, patience, and tolerance, it will not reflect leadership skills, and you will not get a promotion in this life. And yet, and yet these hold the greatest power in our world. One of the great stories from the early church involves the power under control that disciples wielded when they were persecuted. In the Colosseum, Christians would be brought before the crowd and the beast. And when lions were let loose on them, they would be praising and thanking God, part of the list. They would be singing hymns and songs of praise. They would be in prayer for those who were persecuting them. And the Romans learned early on that the killing of Christians didn't wipe out a movement of God. It made more Christians because those in the Colosseum would be stunned at the power, at the power they wielded, a power that's not of this world. May you and I embrace the power that God gives us to be made new, to break down every barrier, to change us from the inside out that we might be God's witnesses to the ends of the earth, reflecting the love of God that God has for all the world. Power under control in your life and mine. Would you pray with me this morning? Oh God, we thank you we thank you that you are faithful in all the ways that you love us and gift us and empower us. We pray to reflect that in this your world perfectly.
We pray for all of our elections. We pray for those who are serving now and those who will come to serve. Lead us in our hearts uh, to lay aside to lay aside our desire to be right or to be in power. Lead us to serve in cooperation with what you're doing in the world. And may your power be made perfect in us through weakness, that you would be glorified, we pray. Amen. Have a great week, church. You are loved in Jesus Christ. And I can't wait to see you soon. Oh